Baruchim Ha'aboyim, welcome everyone. We're about to begin Be'ezes HaShem Adav Chohei Amid Be'ez. The second line. The Gemara brings the Mishnah that if a person who was a Balkari went down into the waters to immerse himself, and then it's time to say Kriya Shema, because it's right before the Neitz HaChama, he should go out of the mikvah if he has enough time to do so and say Kriya Shema after he covers himself up. Says the Gemara, let us say that our Tana in our Mishnah is so same like the opinion of Rabbi Eliezer. By the way, we had a Mishnah in the first parak telling us when is the latest time to say Kishma. And it was a Machlokis. Rabbi Eliezer said until the Neitzachama. That's the last time a person can say Kishma, according to Rabbi Eliezer. Rabbi Yeshua argues and says you can say Kishma until the end of the third hour. So now that our Tana goes in the soysim like the opinion of Rebbe Liyazid. let's say the halach is like him. Says the Gemara, no. Afilu tem Rebbe Yoshua, v'dilmo ki vasikin. Dom Rebbe Yochanon, vasikin have goim oisayim hanetzachama. No, you can say it's Rebbe Yoshua, and the reason why he is careful to go out of the waters, cover himself up and say, Kriya Shema Shel Shacharis, is to behave like the vasikin, those who are medak taking mitzvahs. And therefore, the posse that says, Im Yerucha, Yerucha Im Hashemesh, means to say that a person will gain all when he's Mechabal Ol Malchus Shamayim together when the Shemesh comes up. That's the ideal time to say Kriyashma. Says the Gemara, quoting the Mishnah, if a person does not have enough time to get out of the water, then he can cover himself up and say Kriyashma right there in the water. Vim Rois Kaste Bemaim Viyikra. Says the Gemara, Vahare. Liboy roya es ha'erva. We're talking about a case where a person is standing in the water and his head is outside of the water. And therefore, we have a problem. His lave is able to see his erva. And therefore, how can he say Kriyashma? Says the Gemara, Omar bi Alozar vi Tamar bi Acha bar Abo bar Acha mishum abeinu b'mayim achurim shonu. We're talking about water which is not clear. The damu ke'ara samichta shelo yireh liboy ervosoy. We're talking about where since the water is not clear, it's as if it's similar to the fact that a person is covered up by the dirt, and therefore, since he can't see, therefore the erva, the heart cannot see the erva, thereby it will be mutter to be in such waters and say kriyashma. Now the Gemara brings a brayso along these lines. Tana Rabbanan, mayim selulim. If the person is in clear waters and he's now sitting in the water with his head outside the water, according to this opinion, the Tanakama of this Braisa, he can say Kriyashma. But there's another opinion that argues and says, no, he has to move his feet to cause the dirt to then cause the water to become unclear, whereby his heart won't see his erva. Ask the Gemara, Tanakama, Hare Liboy Rosa Erva, but the Tanakama, behold, he is saying that a person can say, Kriya Shema says this situation, his heart is seeing the Erva. Why is that not a problem? After all, the Torah says that you cannot see Erva when you're saying Divrei Kedusha, including Kriya Shema. Says the Gemara, Kesovar, Liboy Rosa Erva Mutter. He is of the opinion that since the heart normally sees the Erva, in other words, when a person, for example, has a cloak or he's wearing some sort of robe and a loose robe, his heart also sees the erva all of the time. Therefore, there's no hakpada to say Kriyashma without the heart seeing the erva. However, if that's true, but a different part of the body cannot see the erva. And therefore, the Gemara asks, Are akevoy roya es erva? What about his heel? His heel is, yes, seeing his erva. How can he do that? Says the Gemara, Kisora Akeva Rois Ha'erva Mutter. He is of the opinion that that's also not a problem. When the Torah says that a person cannot see his erva when saying Dive Kedusha or somebody else's erva for that matter, it's talking about with his eyes and therefore not any part of his body parts is a problem to see the erva. Itmar, the Gemara brings a statement, Akeva Rois Ha'erva Mutter. If a person's Akev, if his he will see the erva, that is mutter. Noigeya, there's a machlekes. If the akev or another part of the body other than his hands will then touch that aver, 
then that will be a machlekes. Abai Omar Oser, Rav Omar Mutter. Abai says it's Oser because it's a gzeiro, that a person, his hand shouldn't touch that place, which will cause him to have improper thoughts when saying Kriyashma. And therefore it's a gzeiro not to then even touch anybody, anybody part on that place. Rav Omar Mutter. Rav Zvid Masni Lo Lo And this is how Rav Zvid taught this machlekes. Rav Chinen Abirej Rav Iko Masni Lo Hochi. He taught in the following way. Noigeya, when it comes to anything touching the Erevo, everybody agrees, Devi HaKol Osir. There's a Machlokas, however, by Roya, if a body part sees the Erevo. Abai Omar Osir, Rova Omar Mutter, because Lo Nitna Torah, the Malach Yashores. Since a person has Erevo, he's not like a Malach, therefore it can't be expected that his body part doesn't see his Erevo. And therefore, says Rova, it's Mutter, if a body part like the Akev, like the heel, sees the Erevo. The Hilchas of Gemara concludes, Noigeya Oser Roya Mutter. A body part cannot touch the erva, but however, one can see, the body part can see the erva. Again, that's the exception of the lay. The lay cannot see the erva with saying Dive Kedusha. Says the Gemara Amarave, Soya Be'ashoshis Mutter Glikros Kriyashma Kenegdo. If there is Soya, which we learned before that Soya, a person cannot say Kriyashma in front of. However, if it's inside of a glass container, so it says over here that he could, yes, say Kriyashma opposite the Tsoya. Even though it's true, he will be seeing the Tsoya. Erva ba'ashoshis, also likros Kriyashma kinegdo. However, if there's Erva behind, let's say, a window, that a person cannot say Kriyashma opposite that window. Says the Gemara, Tsoya be Ashoshi's mutter, the Kriyos Kriyashma, Kenegda te Tsoya, be Kisu Italia Milsa, the Homechasio. The difference is that when it comes to Tsoya, the Torah is makbid that the Tsoya be covered. It says, the Chisisa. It says, you shall cover it up. So therefore, since it is covered, even if you are able to see it, it's covered. It's in a glass container or it's behind glass. Therefore, you can go ahead and say Kriyashma. Erva, on the other hand, Ba'ashosh is also because Kriyashma Kinegdo. Because Lo Yera, Yera Becho Erva's Dover, Om Rachmona. The Ho Kimich Chazia. Here it's different because when it comes to Erva, the Torah says a different point. It says you should not see an Erva when saying Dive Kedusha. And here, since it's behind glass, you will be able to see it. And therefore, you cannot say Kriyashma when it comes to seeing Erva behind glass. Om Rabaye. Soya koshehu mevatlo beroik. Oh, soya koshehu mevatlo beroik. Abai says if there's a soya, a little bit of soya, then a person's spit, if it's going to be on top of the soya right away before it gets absorbed, it will be considered to be something that is mevatel the soya. Amara rava uveroik ave. Rava says that it has to be thick. The rock has to be thick. The spit that he's spitting on top of the tzoya has to be thick in order to, in order to cover it properly. Let's say there's a hole in the ground and there is tzoya inside of the hole. So he says if you cover it up, even when it comes to standing on it, you're wearing a shoe and you're standing on the hole, you can go ahead and say Kriyashma. And the Chiddush, of course, is that even though he is putting his foot on it, and you might think that the sandal or the sh other shoe wear that he's wearing is bottled to himself, still we say, no, it's good enough to cover up the tzoya. Says the Gemara, Boy mar bereid ravina tzoya devuka besandloi mai. What happens if the tzoya touches the bottom of his sandal, of his shoe, while he's covering it up? What's the din there? The Gemara says, Teiku. Gemara doesn't resolve the question if indeed that's a problem because it's Nes now touching, in this case it's touching his shoe, but nonetheless the shoe is still something that he's covering it up with, and since it's connected to his body, it's considered to be a problem of saying, Kriyashma Neged Di Tsoya, or no, that we say that's considered to be covered up, and therefore it's not a problem, it's underneath him. Teiku, the Gemara, brings it, leaves it unresolved. Says the Gemara of Yehudo Akum, if there's a person who's an Akum Oive Kalchovim, then a person cannot say Kriyashma opposite his Erva. Says the Gemara, my area Akum, Afilu Yisro Nami. Why mention Akum? 
Everybody, including Yisrael, you can't go ahead and say erva. You can't say Kriyashma Keneged erva. What's the difference? Says the Gemara Yisrael Pshitale the Oser. Everybody knows that's Poshit that opposite a Yisrael's erva you cannot say. Ela Akum it's Trichale. By an Akum there's a Chiddush. Mao this same might might think to say Hoyil Viksiv Beru Asher Bosar Chamorim Besorom. I might think since therefore his erva has a din of a erva, a basar of a chamor, therefore it's not considered to be erva halachically that there's a problem to say kriyashma negdoi. Kamash malan, the in hunami ikru erva. Dirsi ve ervas aviem loiro. It says that Noyach, when his children were covering him up, they didn't see his erva. And Noyach wasn't a Bar Yisrael. So we see that in Akum, is considered to have erva, and therefore a person wants to say Kriyashva, it cannot be opposite his erva. Says the Gemara, The Mishnah over here says that a person has to cover up himself, but not with putrid waters. And the Mishnah goes on to say also not with waters that have a stench because flax were soaked in them. And it says over here, Ajiyat Mayim, until he puts in, in the, inside of them water. Ask the Gemara right, right away. The Kamamaya Rami Vaozil. How much water does they have to put in order to then neutralize the stench of this water or the putrid waters that we're talking about? The Gemara says, No, this is how you have to read the Mishnah. It says, You cannot cover yourself up in putrid waters to say Kriyashma. Velobimea Mishra. Klal, and not in waters that were soaked in with flax at all. Then the Mishnah goes on to say, Umeiraglayim, a different subject, in regards to Meiraglayim, if they are, let's say, on the ground, then you can't say Kriyashma, Ajayatil Lesoichen Mayim Vikra, until you're Mevatil, those Meiraglayim, uh, those with water. Then you can go ahead and say Kriyashma. Tony Rabban, now the Gemara brings a Braiso. How much water do you have to put on the Meirag Lion to neutralize it in order to say, Divrei Kedusha Kriyashma? Says the Gemara, Kol Shehu. Even a little bit according to the Tanakhama. Rabbi Zakai Oimer Revis. Rabbi Zakai Oimer says, No, it has to be a shior of a Revis of water. Omer Rav Nachim Machloikis Levasoif. Aber Betchila Kol Shehem. He says the argument they're arguing about is after you already have meiraglayim on the ground. Then there's a machlis how much water to put on top of that meiraglayim. Is it a kol shu or is it a revis? However, he says, if it was first putting the water and then on top of that somebody then urinated, that, he says, is not a machlikis, even a kol shu of water. Meaning to say, because since the water is first on the ground, all of the Meirag line that goes on top of that water will become Mizbatil the moment it touches that area of the water. Rav Yosef, He said, no, that Machloik is, is when you first, a person first has Meirag line, and then, sorry, his Machloik is, is when they first have uh, water, and then there's Meirag line on top of it. That's their Machloik. However, but everybody agrees that if there's first Meirag you have to put a full shear of a Revis in order to neutralize Mavatel the Meirag Lion. Omar le Rabbi Yosef le Shame, the Gemara brings a Maise that Rabbi Yosef said to his Shamish, I see Li Reviyoso de Mayo, Kirabi Zakai. Here he's talking about there's already Meirag Lion. And he says, bring me a Revis of water like Rabbi Zakai, so I can Mavatel the Meirag Lion and say Divrei Kedusha next to it. And therefore, whether it's before or whether it's after, he says the halacha is that a person has to have a shear of a revis, no matter what the amount of meirag lime that there are. Whether the lime is before or after, no matter how much the meirag lime is, it can be neutralized by a shear of a revis of water. Now the Gemara brings a b'raisa that begins with the halacha that we just saw and brings some other halachas in addition. Tony Rabbonon, Graf shel re'i va'avet shel meirag also, if a person has a bedpan of ceramic, whether it is something that is designated for gedolim or whether it's designated for ketanim, he cannot say kriyashma opposite it. Even though it's empty and it's clean, but since it's designated for ketanim or gedolim, 
Therefore, a person cannot say Krishna opposite the bedpan. The Brahsa continues, and meiraglayim, if it's in a kli that is not a bedpan, but rather a new kli, so then he cannot say kriyashma until he's mevatil those meiraglayim with water. The kamayatil is seichen mayim. This is what we saw before. And how much does a person need to mevatil those meiraglayim? How much water? Machlokis. The opinion of the Tanakhama is kol shehu. Rabbi Zakkai Omer Revis. Then the Baisik goes on to say, Ben lifnei hamito, ben la'ach hamito. Whether the, the, the bedpan is before the mito, or whether the bedpan is after the mito, and there's a half sake of the mito, he will not be able to say, Kriyashma opposite the bedpan. Rabbi Shem Ben Gamliel Oimer, la'ach hamito, kore lif, kore. If it's behind the mito, there's a half sake of the mito, and therefore you could say Kriyashma even though the bedpan is in the room, but it's behind the mito. Therefore, you can say it. However, lifnei mito ain't a kare. But if it's before the mito, you cannot say the kriyashma. And he adds, avamarchik hu arba amus vikare. Rabbi Shimon, Allah oimer, Rabbi Shimon says, afilu beis bayis mea amma lo yikro, ashi yotsim o shianichim tachas ha mito. Here's the opinion of Shimon Lozar, that the bias, whatever room, whatever place that you're in, however large it may be, is considered to be Dalit Amos. And therefore, wherever the bedpan might be in that room, even if it's far in the other corner, you cannot say Kriyashma in that room until you do one of two things. Either remove the bedpan entirely by putting it outside, or by hiding it underneath the bed. Now the Gemara asks, Iboy lehu Hechi ka'oma, that which Rabbi Shimon Gamliel said, that if it's behind the mito, if the dead, bedpan is behind the mito, you can say Kriyashon because there's a half sake. But if it's in front, you cannot. He added words and he said, But distance yourself, Dalit Amos, and read the Kriyashma. What was he referring to? Asked the Gemara. Achar hamito kore miyad. Lifnei hamito marchi Dalit Amos vekore. Was he saying that if it's behind the mito, Therefore, there's a half sake of the mita, you can say Krishna right away. Or as he said, and, and when it's before the mita, then you have to distance yourself, Dalit Amos, and say Krishna. Or alternatively, or Dilma, Hochikama, this is what he was saying. La'acha mita marchik Dalit Amos vikare. Lifnei amita eno kore klau. If it's behind the mita, then distance yourself, Dalit Amos, and you can say Krishna that way. But if it's in front of the mita, you can't say Krishna whatsoever. So what was the kavano of Ereshim ben Gamliel when he said these words that you have to distance yourself yourself, Dalit Amois, and then say Kriyashma. Toshma, the Gemara says, listen to the following Braiso, the Tanya, Rabbi Shimon Olozer Oimer, Achar Hamito Kore Miyad, Lifnei Hamito Marchik Arba Amois. So that sounds like, sounds like the opinion that we just heard, the first of the two Tzdodim, that indeed if a person is Achar Hamito, he can read them Kriyashma right away, because there's a half sake. But if it's in front of the mitah, then he has to distance himself Dalit Amos and then say Kriyashma. Rabbi Shem Megam Luloi, Me Afilu Bayis, Me Ya'amo, Lo Yikro, Asher Yotim, Osh Yanich, and Tachas Hamito. He says the bias is like one Dalit Amos space, and therefore you have to take out the, the bedpan entirely or hide underneath the bed. Says the Gemara, Boy in Ev Shitalon. In terms of our question, we answered, we had to start him in the Kavan of Hashem Megam Leo, and we answered now like the first Tzad. That he meant to say, you have to dis your Dalit Amos and read the Kriyashma. It's talking about specifically when it's before the Mita. Because if it's after the Mita, you can say Kriyashma right away. But Masnais Sakashna Dadi, however, there's a contradiction with the Brysos. Because the first Brysa that we quoted was in the name of Shabbat Shalom Leah that said this. The latter Brysa said that, Shem, that it was somebody else, it was Rabbi Shimbin Alazar, who said this dim. And vice versa, it also said in the first Brisa that it was Rabbi Shin ben Alaza that said the din that the entire room is Dalit Amos. And the second Brisa that was said in the name of Rabbi Shin ben Gamliel. Says the Gemara, Ipuch Basraisa, turn around the two opinions in the latter Brisa. And therefore, say that is indeed Rabbi Shin ben Gamliel who says, Acha Amita, Kore, Lifne Amita, Marchik Dalit Amos. Ask the Gemara, my chazis, the ipcha basraiso, ipuch kamaiso. What makes you then see to see fit to then mahapech the opinions in the latter braiso, 
Maybe you should do so in the beginning, in the first b'risa. Says the Gemara, man shamis le the Omar kule bayis arba amos domi. Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar he he says we have a Masar, It's not clear where it's from, but that Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar is the one who said this halacha that if you have a bias where there is a bed pen inside of that bias, no matter how large it is, then it's considered to be one dollar amos space, and therefore you'd have to take it out entirely or hide it underneath the bed. Says the Gemara. Now that we talked about this opinion that you can hide underneath your bed and say Kriyashma, ask the Gemara of Yosef, Boy me name Rav Huna, Mita Palchas Mishloisha. If it's a bed that is less than Gimot Fochim, Pshitali to Kelovu Domi. It is Pashit to me, since there's a Halacha Lavoshim Sinai, that there's something called Lavud. Within three Tfochim, it's as if it's enclosed, it's closed space. And therefore, if the bed is lower than three tfachim, then it's as if it's on the ground. And therefore, if the bedpan is underneath the bed in such a situation, it'll be, it'll be as if it is covered up, and you can say Kriyashma in that situation. So you say, that's Pashit to me. What is not Pashit? The following. Shloisha Arba, Arba, Chamisha, Shisha, Shiva, Shmoina, Tisha, Mahu. What about beyond, higher than three tfachim? Three tfachim and beyond. What is the din then? Omar Li, he said to me, I, Lo yadana, I don't know the halacha, I don't know to answer you the question. Li, he says, Ten I for sure did not ask. That for sure is not a question to me. It's good that you, what you did by not asking the question of ten tfachim. Because, because every ten tfachim is considered to be a separate, independent rishus. And therefore, for sure, that would be considered to be uncovered if the bedpan is underneath a bed that is ten tfachim or higher. Rava says the halacha is that if it's a bed that we said is less than three tfachim, it's like a closed space, whereby if the bedpan is underneath that bed, then it's considered to be covered up by the bed, and you can say Kriyashma in that room. Asara Rishusa Achritahi. If it's ten Tfachim or higher, that's a completely, completely different Rishus, and therefore you could not say Kriyashma according to this opinion if it was underneath such a bed. Mishloisha Adasara, Hainu de Boy Mine Rav Yosim Rav Huna. This was a question that Rav Yosef asked Rav Huna, and that Rav Huna didn't have an answer to that question. Omar Rav, Halacha ki Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar. The Halacha of Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar, in this regard, that a person who has a bedpan in the room, it's like he's, if, no matter how large the room is, as if it's in, within Dalit Amos of his, of where he is, and therefore he cannot say Krishma or Divay Kedusha opposite it, unless he brings it outside the room, he said, or puts it underneath the bed, that is a bed of at least three talk, underneath three talkim. The Chen Omar Bali, Omar Yaakov, the Rav Amar ain't Allah of Shimon Lazar. However, Rav said that Allah is not like him. And therefore, if a person is going to be a distance of Dalit Amos from such a thing, it has a din of Tsoya, and therefore a person could say Kriyashma or Divrei Kedusha opposite, so long as it doesn't have a smell that is emanating from it, and as long as it's something that is going to be at such a distance. 